Uh, we're going to go ahead and call the meeting to order. Uh, this is the meeting of the Information Technology and General Services Committee for Tuesday, October 10th. Um, welcome, everybody. And uh, I understand we do have uh, multiple item comment cards as well as public comments. So we're going to go ahead and take that and get that um, going. And we'll start first with... Uh, registered as Puppet, so I'm assuming, is that Mr. Spindler? Yes, yeah, Okay, so uh, one minute for general public comment, and then two minutes total for item, uh, submitted for item one, two, three, four, five, six, yes. seven, and eight. Very good. And nine. Yes, yeah, so the... We wanted to, of course, remember to thank you for defeating Kiro Torosian because we know that Paul Krikorian is a goat scumbag. <laughs> and he would have controlled CD7 without your help. So we're going to be thanking you at each of our public comment for giving us that victory and keeping Paul Krikorian the goat isolated in his evil seat. Yes. Now we have... Leases. But why don't we give each of these leaseholders, these fine businesses, a $1 a year lease? What do you say, everybody? Let's do it for $1 a year. Raise your hands. It's unanimous. Second. Those in favor? Aye. Those opposed? There we go. Everybody gets a lease for $1 a year. Thank you so much. And that's what the puppet does. The puppet creates opportunities for jobs. So you look at number one, the LA Region Imitry Acquisition Consortium Tita Fresh. We don't know. Maybe this is for Cal Fresh. We don't know. Whatever it is, we're giving money away. Give them the money. A blank check for corruption. Yes, today is Tuesday. It's corruption day. We like it. Number two, the Korean mu Museum. Again, we approve of this. It's about time Koreans in Los Angeles have their own museum. Everybody else has a museum. The Jewish Museum for Christian Intolerance, for example. Bob Blumenfield sits on that board. We have other types of intolerance museums. So now we'll have the Korean American Intolerance Museum. But you're going to be taking away a parking lot where a lot of people park for affordability, $4 an hour in one of the poorest areas of LA. And they really need the parking lot in 617 South River. Fuck the poor. Yes. Yes, fuck the poor. Tear it down and build a museum and make those cocksuckers pay $20 a day to park because we're a city of wealthy people, right? Yes. And then we have CD number three, the West Valley Municipal Building. Tear it down and build a new one. Spend $8 million and build a brand new. Isn't it time that Mr. Blumenfield have a brand new building? Jesus Christ, that building goes back to Joy Picus. Joy Picus, for Christ's sakes. It's time to tear that shit down and build a new building, the Bob Blumenfield Constituent Center. Thank you so much. Thank, Thank you, you, Mr. Spindler. Um, next, we have Mr. Herman for multiple, uh, multiple agenda items and public comment. So you have a total of three minutes. Well, now that we have a um, <clears throat> 2,500 square foot of uh, general service for a West Valley Municipal Building, we should call it the uh, Antichrist Jewish Killing, approved by and leased by your constituents for September 28, 2017. Then let's go into Peppa Pig. He's talking about what? Let's lease to hair. In the Sager French Salon. See, when you got Jews in South Robertson Boulevard hooking up with hair salon products, you know, you eventually go from white to black like a like, like if you were an Oreo like me. See, I, on the outside of my skin, I'm dark skin, but on the inside of my documents say I'm a Caucasian, 
whatever the fuck that means. And then I go into item number 666, Jose Weza. He wants a, a, a fucking doing business for the Plaza Cars and Gifts. Well, that fucking young Wu Park should, should put Francine Godoy cards out there so I can have a good time mailing them to all my ex-bitches. After all, you know, when you're a married person and you're fucking other women... Stick to the item. Yeah, man, I'm talking about Jessica Lee Young Wu, who's who has GSD, not MOU agreement with Jose Weezer for the Plaza Cars and Gifts. The same gift he gave Francine Godoy for $185,000 when he fucked the head city hall. Then I go to item number two, because I got one minute of general public comment coming up. Item number two, CD10 regarding Herman Jason Wesson Jr., Department of Transportation, LADOT, with the you know, fuck the Korean Museum. Because when Donald Trump drops those motherfucking bombs on those North Korean motherfuckers for threatening us American people, all those webbacks are going to know who the fuck they're fucking with in America today. Let's make America great. Now my general public comment is this. You can't turn in a public comment card with any type of sticker. Who made up this fucking rule? Because I, I don't agree with it because my public comment card is my testimony. That's my expression of fucking free speech, Bob. Send that to Sacramento. Because I know Mitchell Ferrell don't give a fuck about my public speech because he's the one that puts the TRO and the TMOUs against Michael Hunt. And that's why Carol Bowles, the judge, Goodson, told him to get the fuck out of my courts and stop fucking it up with all your malicious lies. Stop putting restraining order on people that you claim are threatening you. No one's threatening you. When you get AIDS and you die, there's no threat. You're going to fucking die. That's a fact. So, bottom line is this. Next time you make love with your lover, puto, put a condom on. Okay, uh, next we have John Walsh for general public comment and a speaker card on item 9 and item 2. John Walsh, blogging at HollywoodHighlands.org, or Jay Walsh Confidential, tweeting at Hollywood Dems. And uh, for the first next month, Monica Rodriguez gets an exemption from any negative public comment because she whipped Tarosian's ass. Uh, Tarosian came out of the, the, the uh, backside of the Armenian city councilman. He's a turd. Okay, now uh, let's go to items two and nine. Uh, DOT agreement with Korean American Museum. Well, I hope you give him a nice place. Uh, the municipal parking lot? Let me tell you, the Koreans are being treated like crap. They get their <laughs> museum in a parking lot. Uh, maybe if they could... Uh, whiten up a little bit and have some uh, uh, plastic surgery on their eyes, they'd get something more than a, par a parking lot. Number nine, uh, this is uh, Department of Cannabis Regulation, and this is an extra half million dollars added to their contract. What's the half million dollars for? Uh, I know what it's for. It's to have big bowls of cannabis so everyone can smoke in. Uh, this is 500 for site improvements. What the hell are the site improvements? God knows you won't ask for it. You'll ask for some free samples, but you won't ask why an extra half million dollars for Department of Cannabis regulation. We'll be spending millions and millions of dollars. You can take the extra... See, I don't jerk off for the full t uh, uh, time. You can have the little extra minute. That concludes uh, general public comment and uh, our speaker cards. So we'll go ahead and close general public comment. And um, 
colleagues, I, uh, items three, four, and six through nine, uh, without objection, would like to take that on consent? No objection here. Okay, without objection, that'll be the order. Uh, and uh, calling up our first item. Good afternoon, John White, City Clerk. Item one, CO report relative to the city engineer executing an agreement with the County of Los Angeles for the acquisition of imagery in the countywide Los Angeles Region Imagery Acquisition Consortium's data refresh project for a contract amount of $705,595 and related actions. Terrific. Good afternoon, Edmund Yu from Bureau of Engineering. Veronica Von Roster with the Bureau of Engineering. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Uh, this is an item that uh, is an example of the city partnership with different city agencies within the county in acquiring the technology to help us to do the day-to-day -day life. This is what we are doing is that we are working together with the county and different cities within the county to generate new aerial photos every two to three years. And so this is the, we have been working together with the county and different cities for the last 15 years or so. So this is like the fifth time that we are doing this. And then uh, what we are doing here is to um, uh, come to the, the council for funding. And most of the fundings are provided by different departments. Uh, within the city, there are like 10 different departments participating in this uh, agreement, ranging from fire department to police and public works engineering. So we all find it to be extremely useful to have this aerial image. And uh, we found this, uh, this is something that we would uh, like to uh, really, is really helping us, not even in the, within the city agencies, but also helping the general public so they have access to the aerial imaging. And we find this to be a very useful item. So we have requested the council for approval for this one. Thank you so much. On the aerial imaging, um, I have a question as it relates to, is, does it help us to better determine the property lines of yeah. some of the yeah. parcels that are? Yeah, exactly. This is one thing that is different than like the Google map, right. because Google map is not tied into our GIS reference. So really, it's, it's not that useful to us other than just have the image. But uh, this imaging system is tied to our GIS reference system. So when you look at like a navigate LA, you can turn on the aerial photo layer and turn on the property line layer. It's, it will almost give you like a, like a survey, Im, the imaging of the survey. So we find this to be extremely useful when we work with the, like, the general public in determine, determining, for example, whether a tree is within public right of way or on private property or a wall is on private property. That's, a, that's the first thing that BOE staff would go to to look at this. And that would save a lot of resource rather than sending our crew to do a survey. And that's extremely useful for general public as well as the city staff. Well, this is very timely because, in fact, in my district, we are preparing ourselves to conduct a cleanup in the wash. Uh, and one of the largest expenses that we incur with that effort is identifying the property lines because it's mixed between private property, county, DWP, and, uh, and just other public right-of-way. Right. So it's, it's got, how is it determined in terms of the scope of work? Um, yeah, definitely. In Navigate LA, we have ability to turn on different layers. So we have a layer for aerial photo. We have another layer for property lines, for public streets. And, and by turning on different layers on and off, we can see an example of what is actually within the public right of way. I have an example right here. It's a copy of a map that we generate for in your district near the Tahunga Wash. Right. So this is a by, or actually this is an example in City Hall area. We, by turning on the different layers, we can... Let me pass it on. Yeah, sure. So is it, are the wash, like is the Tahunga wash, for example, is that included among some of the scope of work that's going to be conducted as part of this? Um, this is not really aimed for any specific project. This is for the whole city. We will have aerial imaging for the whole city. Then it's up to us to utilize whatever the image to put it on, like for example, Navig Airway. Mm -hmm. Then the whole city will be available to, to be benefited by this, this project. Because that, that's one of the items that I just, I would like to um, make sure, because it's a cost that we incur right, yeah. consistently. Yeah. yeah, definitely. With this, we should be able to assist your office to generate whatever maps or make determination of whether something is private property or public right away or versus other agencies' property. We should be, with this really would help us to identify that. Great. Um, colleagues, do you have any questions? Um, Mr. Blumenfeld. So the, is the imagery available to the public? 
definitely for, for us in BOE, we put all this on our GIS system, the Navigate LA, so everybody can will have access to this, yes. In, in addition, the planning department also uses it to showcase uh, their items on Zemus, so the public will have access to Zemus. And DWP is another department obviously, that uses it a lot for all of those property lines and property management, so they'd be able to access it and provide that information to you as well. And in, in the last 15 years, has the technology changed quite a bit in terms of how these images are taken and, and processed? Has that affected the price or... Um, have we been updating the technology regularly? As far as the price, it has been pretty stable. Uh, I know the last round is the, the overall price is more or less the same. So I know the county, they were thinking of having a more frequent, frequent flyover as far as the uh, having images um, more often. But the determination from all the city was that that profit would not justify for the expenditure because they will be talking about doubling or tripling the cost. Mm -hmm. So for now, we, we accept the fact that we are getting image from like every two to three years. For now, most of the department thinks that that would be sufficient for now. But as far as the quality of the image over the years, and they are getting better, definitely. Because I would have thought the price would go down. I mean, you know, technology has been advancing so fast, and these images are stable. Right, there, yeah. There would have been cheaper, faster ways. To, what do we do to to refresh that every couple of years or to infuse some competition into that process? Because it's not, is it the county that does it or is it, do they contract out? The county is the lead, they contract out. So they contract out. Right. So they could, they could do an RFP. Right. How often do they yeah. do that? I think every uh, update is more or less two to three years. So I think that's what they are doing two to three years. They would negotiate and whether they are working with the current vendor or they would go out for a new RFP, I, that I don't know, yeah. Thank you, okay. Thank you Madam Chair. Uh, so my question had to do with updating as well, data updating. And, and so are we just uh, purchasing one set of data in current times or will there be an automatic update with this purchase every two or three years? I think it's, it's Every two to three years, we got a whole new set of imaging. So, for example, right now on Navig contract, yes. that's correct. Okay. Yeah. Uh -huh. So, right now on Navig LA, we are getting the image from 2014. Mm -hmm. So, hopefully, within the next year or so, we will be getting a new version. Whether from 2017, I would say they probably are doing that now. So, it's like every two, two, two and a half years, we got new image. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. And and so we're joining this instead of going it alone and and single sourcing our own process, we're joining a consortium. Is there a, a, a price advantage to, to that? Would it have been more expensive than the, the quoted contract price had we not gone with the consortium? Uh, I, I don't have that information, but I can just imagine that for us, if we just have to do something on our own, just to fly over the city portion, and just the overhead and the, the, the startup cost for that property will, will, will not make it a lot more expensive than you have a lot more city to be able to share the same uh, cost. Yeah. Well, it helps us too. Yeah. I, Thank you. No, I mean, it, I, it completely makes sense. We're both surveying the same area. We're going to, you know, use similar data. We need to know, in fact, where the property lines exist, whether we're county or city. So that's a huge benefit. Right. My question is, um, how was it determined uh, in terms of how the costs were shared amongst the different departments? As I said, we have been doing this for the last 15 years or so. I think all these agreements were put together like 15 years ago. So we have been kind of using the same proportional share. As you can see the, on the report, most departments we are paying approximately $5,000. The one department that's paying the most would be water and power because they have the water system and the power system. So I think just because of the way they utilize the, 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 all this, the product, and, and they are willing to pay for more. So we all work together to, to come up with this share yeah we have been doing this proportional to the use for right. for each department right. and they determine that every every time an update for the larry act system comes up uh, so if usually water and power is the one that uses it the most okay terrific um i think it's satisfied all my questions colleagues do you have any questions any objections just a curiosity, well, we have one question. Uh -huh. So how do you determine who uses the most? Because it's publicly available data, right? So, 
actually in in a, there are some minor additions that different departments can ask for for example building and safety they request to have the building footprint which is kind of unique to building and safety because they want to look at where the buildings are and so they would ask for they would ask for say additional features so those are like capabilities that different departments can almost like custom request when they and then they will end up paying a little bit more like in this case building and safety is paying more than public works engineering so so those are there are some little features that different departments can request in addition to the imaging but the imaging is the basic package but the imaging anybody can go online and get so uh, if I wanted to if my council office were using it the product a lot you would never know about it because we would just click in on it. There is um, a type of user ID that's assigned to each one of the department's groups that are going to be using it. So certain items are downloaded for them. And that's how it becomes a little bit more specific and more utilized by certain groups in, in different ways. So certain data is only available to, to the departments that isn't all for the general public. And do we, do we does the general public, we have any idea of how much they use it? Is it a I know in Navigate LA, we got, every day we got thousands of hits from, from internally and as well as external users. So, so we know that for BOE alone, we, this, is a, uh, this is something that we get calls all the time from the general public. They have questions on the imagery and they, they, they find out things that they don't realize and so they will come and talk to us. So this is a definitely a, a good way for, for the public and they do use, utilize that, I'm sure. Yeah. No. Okay. Um, without objection, we'll go ahead and, and uh, adopt this item. Thank you so much. Okay. Thank you. Um, moving on to item number two. Item two. See a report relative to amending the Los Angeles Department of Transportation agreement with the Korean American Museum. The development of a mixed use project at LA DOT Municipal Parking Lot 622, located at 601 through 617 South Vermont Avenue. <clears throat> Hi, Jackie Wagner with the CAO's office, and I need an additional chair for my counterpart. Let's go up. No? Okay. Okay. Good afternoon, committee members uh, <clears throat> and chair. The transmittal before you is a report from the Municipal Facilities Committee, and it conveys the actions of the March meeting. <clears throat> um, Sorry. And it conveys the actions of the March meetings. At the March meeting, the Municipal Facilities Committee instructed uh, our office, as well as the City Attorney's Office, and primarily the City Attorney's Office, to continue with negotiations and to report back once those negotiations were done with the Korean American Museum. Since the time of the meeting, um, the City Attorney, uh, our office, as well as the Council District, has worked together to um, finalize the uh, leasing terms. And this report basically conveys those, um, those actions. The um, additional terms that have been agreed to since the time of the meeting include uh, tempor uh, an agreement on the temporary parking, which, sorry, yes, which allows for 57 um, replacement temporary offsite parking spaces at no cost to the, to the city or to the department. Um, LADOT will operate the spaces or, and, um, for the duration of the construction. As far as the permanent parking, um, LODOT will control and operate 57 public parking spaces within the new parking structure that, we that will be built on the site. This also is at no additional cost to the LADOT. All revenues will remain with DOT and DOT will pay a pro rata share of the operating expenses to the Korean American Museum. As far as the parking equipment, the Korean American Museum will purchase and install the parking access and revenue control system, which will be conveyed to LADOT after installation, and again, at no additional cost to the Department of Transportation. The purchase option, which was discussed very briefly in the CAO report to the MFC, has been negotiated, um, and uh, the Korean American Museum will have the option, exercisable on the 10th anniversary of the issuance of the Certificate of Occupancy, or any time thereafter during the term of the lease to purchase a property at the then current market value, not including the Korean American uh, Museum installed improvements. Upon such a sale, the covenant will be recorded against the property for, amongst other things, the preservation of the affordable housing units. Uh, there is an additional term with regard to the environmental um, 
At the time that this report was heard before the Municipal Facilities Committee, uh, the indication was that the city would be responsible for up to $25,000 for hazardous materials remediation costs. That, um, that particular term has been changed through the negotiations and now the maximum cost is uh, recognized in the lease is up to 250. The city's share would be 125,000 and uh, the Korean American Museum share would be for 125. However, if remediation costs exceed 250, uh, then either party may terminate the lease. If the Korean American Museum folks decide to or agree to pay the entire remediation cost above 250, then the lease would continue. Uh, we believe that this is this continues the intent, effectuates the intent of the MFC, and um, we're therefore conveying this report for approval by this committee and um, onto council. As far as the fiscal impact, approval of the recommendations in this report will result in an impact of up to 20, 125,000 on the general fund to the extent that we're not able to identify other funds, non-general fund dollars that could cover this. Um, and then additionally, the attached report indicates the total community benefit after completion of the project, including staff services, affordable housing, and local taxes is over $1 million annually. I am joined by Curtis Kidder of the City Attorney's Office. I also have the uh, Jordan Bookerman from the Council District, and we're available to take your questions. Thank you. Hi. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Um, so, colleagues, did you have any questions? You want to start uh, just a comment and a question. Uh, first of all, I was very happy to support this project to turn a surface parking lot into a mixed-use development with affordable housing component for a very low income uh, to help at least, uh, you know, take one small step forward in uh, helping to solve our housing crises. So it's, it's, a, it's a great project. And uh, I want to commend the Korean American Museum uh, Board for their work and city staff as well. It's, it's, really, it's really great to see this. Question in terms of the 30-month um, the construction period uh, when there won't be uh, the parking spaces available. I know that they're going to reconstruct the parking spaces. So there won't be a net loss. But what about the revenue uh, loss during the construction period? Or have the developers identified uh, a space, uh, a location for those spaces temporarily? How does all of that fit in? Okay, so I have the parking administrator here from LADOT, Ken Hastings, and I'm going to have to allow him to come okay. up and ex answer that question. <laughs> Thank you very much. Good question. So what we've arranged for in the agreement is during the temporary, during the construction of 30 months, they are to find replacement parking within a quarter mile radius to provide for public parking. And in the event that there is not a lot available, then they'll have to pay the LADOT, the SPRF account, the equivalent amount of money that we would have been making had the lot still been there during those 30 months. That pretty much answers it. it, and it's good to know this going forward. I think we're going to start developing a lot of a lot of city lots, so it's important that we have a template uh, that we can just kind of roll out every time we redevelop our surface parking lots. Yeah, and this was a good template. Uh, working with the different departments to figure out, you know, how we're going to move forward with the replacement parking, what are the conditions going to be, and to make sure that you know we're providing this property to be developed. Mm -hmm and that we're still looking at uh, the city's interest. Terrific. I also want to commend the council president's office uh, for this project. Yeah. Absolutely. Thank you. Sure. Thank you, Mr. O'Farrell. Um, Mr. Blumenfeld? Sure. I, I agree. It seems like a good model. I'm looking at something, my district, similar with basically util better utilizing the airspace and, and keeping the parking lot the existing use in some form. So that's great. Are there any uh, terms that remain, lease terms that are still unresolved that we should know about? Well, uh, I can answer that. We, we reached a, basically a term sheet with the Korean American Museum on all the salient points of the lease. Um, at this point, I don't believe there are any unresolved issues. We're actually working through the lease document right now, so we're getting down into the weeds and actually negotiating, the, the crossing the I's and dotting the T's, if you will. Um, so uh, I don't believe there are any unresolved lease terms at this point. Everyone's happy. Okay. That's good. Wow, that's good. In this day and age? <laughs> that's good. And then just a question, in the long run for the city, is it, is it more in our interest to continue to own the property or to lease the structure? You know, should, should we be selling this property or leasing it? I know it's an option for the museum after 10 years, they can, they can do that. But, but what are your thoughts about that from, from the city's perspective? Hmm. 
It's, I think it's on a case-by-case -case basis, um, uh, and we've been advised by the city attorney's office uh, you know, on a case-by-case -case basis. For the most part, we we're doing affordable in our homeless housing in order to ensure that the covenant remains, um, and also because it gives us more control over what happens on the property, we are doing mostly ground leases. So it's, uh, we, for the most part, we think it's better to own for us to keep ownership of the property. And if we were to sell it, we still have tools to, to maintain those covenants? Yes. Great. Right. Yeah. Great. No, thank you. Thank you very much. I think all, all the answers you guys helped cover them and uh, the questions that I had. Um, so I appreciate that. Thank you very much. So uh, without objection, we will go ahead and adopt that. Item. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, finally, number five. Item five. Seal report relative to the General Services Department agreement with Douglas Emmett 1998 LLC for the lease of 2,182 square feet of office space at 15,760 Ventura Boulevard for approximately $6,328 per month for use by the 5th Council District. Good afternoon. John Shepard, General Services Department, Real Estate Services. Um, GSD requests uh, to amend the report before you. Um, to extend the lease termination uh, that's been negotiated uh, to 2023. Uh, that would be consistent with uh, Council Member Corrette's term. Um, and we also reached an agreement with the, with the landlord for a two-year option to cover the end of his term and another year should the next council person coming in uh, uh, decide to, to use that uh, saying or maintain that space. Any questions? Makes sense. Yep, makes sense <laughs> to me. Uh, any questions? Uh, seeing none, we'll go ahead and adopt that item with the amendment uh, as stated. Thank you. Thank you very mm -hmm. much. Okay. And uh, have we cleared the desk? Yes, ma'am. Okay, so this meeting is adjourned. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.